I do believe that the gradient falls under the category of not something that's too terrible to evaluate. It's not so bad. Um, just a reminder that if we have a function, in this case of two variables, the gradient is the vector of partial derivatives. And for those of you that miss your i, j, and k, you know it's the x partial derivative times i and the y partial derivative times j. And if we had three variables, there would be a k component as well. So, what can we do with only the gradient? We saw that it was used in a, several other properties, or that you could use it in several other properties. What does it do by itself? So let's suppose we have a function of x, y, and we are going to calculate its gradient. How come? Well, because the page has a title on it. So I'm using my student superpowers and just sort of assume I probably need this calculation. So the gradient of this function is a vector I get with those two partial derivatives. The derivative with respect to x is going to be just 1, and the derivative with respect to y is going to be 2y. And then, after I did that great work, I'm told, oh, that's not what the direction is for the problem yet. Um, we want to look at something else. And so what I've got here are two images that actually show you what this function looks like. This z equals x plus y squared. It's not a graph already in our list of, of uh, three-dimensional surfaces that we know from memory. So I just used the help of GeoGebra 3D to uh, show you two versions of the, the graph. Well, the surface doesn't change, but I'm going to toss in some additional vocabulary. Um, the concept that was called level curve. So this particular level curve, um, you can't see it well yet. I'm going to put it in quotes because I'm not actually drawing the curve, but I'm showing you this blue plane here is where it intersects the surface three units above the XY plane. And then this is the same shape, the same surface, but this is where it the level curve would be if I traced along here. That would be the level curve, just the curve that it looks like a parabola, when um, the level or z equals 4. So it turns out gradient has something to do with these level curves. Now, if you're in my classroom, you should just know right now that drawing the 3D surface was not part of the assignment, but I want you to have a little visual of this when I go to the two-dimensional graph. And so I want to show you what the level curve um, and the gradient have to do with each other. Okay? So I'm going to just slide up here because I don't need the 3D graphs for this. If I want to evaluate um, this function and find points, that's great. But what I want to know is where are all the points that are three units above the ground when z is three. So I replace z with three. And I, I think this is a parabola. And it could be redrawn. Um, x could be written as three minus y squared. This is a parabola that opens to the left. It may not be a version of the parabola you've drawn or sketched recently, but that's kind of why I picked it, is to exercise some additional muscles. And what I have here is um, the graph of this parabola. But before I get any further, um, let me put gradient here before the other page disappears 
1 comma 2y was my gradient. Okay, I'm going to need that for what happens here. So what I'm going to do is show you the parabola we would get if we were three units above the ground, the intersection of that plane and that surface. Okay? Dun, dun, dun. All right. So, we, oops, my focus needs more focus. There we go. Here is a level curve. It's a parabola that opens left. Its vertex is at 3, 0. It has a nice point here at 1, 0. There's another nice point at negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Negative six three and negative six negative three and oh that's not negative one one that's negative one two and this is negative one negative two etc you can find list those coordinates I'm just having fun I think now let's suppose we choose one of these points I'm going to choose this point here. If I were to evaluate the gradient, now I need my correct notation, at the point where x is negative 1 and y is positive 2, I would get the vector 1 comma 4. See, the x component's always 1, and then 2 times the y value, so that'd be 4. And if I were to start here at this point and draw that vector over 1, 1, 2, 3, uh-oh, at a graph paper, 4, this vector has that direction and that exact magnitude is normal to the curve, is normal to the level curve at the point negative 1 comma 2. So it's perpendicular to the tangent line. You know, when we first started calculating derivatives in the beginning of calculus, we used the derivative to find the slope of something or the direction of the tangent line. Well, now here we are using partial derivatives to help us find something related to the direction. It happens to be perpendicular to the tangent line, but it's still related to that direction. If I were to use the point here, uh, 2 comma negative 1, oh my goodness, look at that. I did a terrible job here. That's the point 2, 1 right there. All right. Better late than never, I guess. So let's say I was going to calculate this gradient at the point 2 comma negative 1. Well, the gradient x component is always 1. And the y component is 2 times whatever the y value is. And if y is negative 1, it would be negative 2. So I would start here and go 1 unit to the right and 2 units down. and that vector is normal to the curve at the point 2 comma negative 1. So this tool, the gradient, gives us the ability to know something about the direction of a curve if there are two variables in the function. Now, I'm not going to write this next part down, but I do want to sort of uh, tell you one other property of the gradient so you can at least hear me say it. 
We're not going to study this one as much in my particular classroom, but then you never know what visitors are going to do or what they're going to need when they come here. So, this direction happens to be the most direct route to the next level curve. Or it's the steepest part of the 3D surface. So if I were to go back to my 3D surfaces and I was to find that normal vector, that's pointing the closest way to get to the next level on the graph. That would be one unit higher. It is the direction of the maximum increase. And if you put a negative in front of the vector, it'll point to the steepest downhill route from there. So, you know, if you're ever on a mountain and you want to know what's the steepest way I could go, just calculate the gradient. Don't all backpackers do that? <laughs> we will look at a three variable example if you come back for the next video. It'll be exciting. Trust me.